Today's video is a makeup tag video and we are calling it 15 Juicy Confessions. This is a collab video with my dear friend Andy from Andy Does Stuff and she got this idea from Erica Conger. Erica did a collab video with one of her friends, Kay, whose channel is Makeup Lens. I will have all of these channels listed and linked down below. Kay came up with all of the questions. Andy wanted to do them. She asked me if I would join her, and of course, I said yes. Hey, howdy, hey, y'all. If you're new here, my name is Leanna, and at almost 60 years old, it is my passion to help you be more confident, know your self-worth, and show yourself some self-love through the power of makeup. Let's get into these 15 questions. Question number one, have you ever returned a makeup product? And yes, yes I have. I know for a fact that I have returned three eyeshadow palettes. The first one is the Huda Beauty Empowered palette. I bought that right when it came out. I was super excited about it. It just did not work for me. And I have a ton of Huda Beauty eyeshadow palettes, but for some reason that palette just did not work for me. And so I sent it back to Sephora because they have that policy that if it doesn't work for you, you can send it back for a full refund. And I did because that's pricey. The second palette that I sent back was the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette which again was another palette that I was super excited about. I ordered it as soon as it came out. When it got here and I went to use it, I decided I didn't need a nude. <laughs> I had enough nudes. There was nothing really special for me about that palette. And so yeah, again, because it's pricey, I sent that one back too. The third palette that I sent back is the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership celestial nirvana i thought that that was a gorgeous palette and for the price i mean excellent price on a pat mcgrath palette of that size so i ordered it and when i got it it just the color story you know things online look a lot different than when you actually get them in your hands and then when you go to put them on your face on your skin tone they look different and again that's a lot of money. So when Sephora and Ulta say, no questions asked, we will take it back. If it doesn't work for me, I'm sending it back. Other products that I might have sent back were things that were broken when I got them, but those are the only three items that come to mind. Question number two is, do you have any makeup backups, like specific items, not generalized, categories and I was thinking about that and I was like why would you have backup and makeup like but I was thinking, I was thinking about eyeshadow palettes and no but there are a few things that I do have backups of like my covergirl instant wrinkle blurring powder if you have been around you know I love this. I love this powder. I love it. I have it on today and I love it so much. I think this is like the third one that I've been through and yes, I have a backup of that. The other thing that I have a backup of is this ColourPop Act Natural Defining Mascara that the words are coming off but I love this mascara. When it came out, I think I got it in a box. I don't remember how I got my hands on it, but I was so impressed with this mascara. It works extremely well, and it's extremely affordable, I think. It was like $9, and I did not go look at the price. I should have, because, you know, inflation, even makeup has gone up, so the price might be a little bit more, but... Yeah, I had to go get a backup because I love it that much. Those are the only two makeup products that I have right at the moment. Now, I don't know that I would get a 
a backup of other products you know like blush or bronzer I might do bronzer I have a lot of bronzer that I need to work through and maybe a blush too but definitely things like setting sprays or setting powders um, eyeliners that type of thing I would probably do a backup of once I get through the 1 million products that I currently have in my inventory. Number three is force panning a product that's purposely using more than you need to, wasting the product so that you can get to pan. And again, my first thought was no. I have panned quite a few products, you know, but like... You would not be able to use more, well, I mean, you could use more bronzer than you should, but you, you, it would be very noticeable if you overused your bronzer just to hit pan. You could be more precise, you know, in one spot to hit that pan. But most makeup, I would think it would be hard to overuse it because it would be noticeable when you put it on your face. I mean, maybe not so much like a finishing powder, but this powder has some tint to it, and when I put it on, you know, you can kind of see it. So, makeup products, I think it would be a little bit difficult to overuse those just to hit pan. Other products that you can use up that's you're not necessarily hitting pan but maybe bottom you know you hit bottom they call that pan there are some of those types of skincare products that i have you could say that i overused it to hit pan but i don't feel like i wasted it when i started my panning journey i realized that I was being stingy with some of my skincare products. Maybe not necessarily my serums and lotions and potions that I put on my face, but those products that I use on my body, I was being very stingy and I was like, I need to be a little bit more generous with these products and show my body that love that it needs, you know? Especially when your skin is really dry, we're starting to go into the winter months now. It's getting a little cool here at night in Missouri. So it's it's good, you know, to give my, my skin that little bit of extra love. So if that's considered wasting, then yeah, that's what I'm doing. So let this be your reminder that you have permission to lavish your body with your skincare products and show yourself some extra love and pamper yourself so that you can hit those pants. Number four is not cleaning your brushes or makeup sponges in a month. Just a month? Because <laughs> I've gone two, maybe three, possibly four. I mean, I've gone a long time sometimes. I'm better about it now. But you know, there are those times when you're just super busy and you don't have time and it kind of falls to the wayside. I will say though, your brushes work so much better when they're clean. They really do perform better. Number five is used mascara way past its prime. So, <laughs> let's go back to the ColourPop. And as you can see, the stuff you know, the writing, the ink and stuff is coming off because how long ago did this mascara come out? Well, that's when I got it and I'm still using it. And y'all are probably going to bark at me in the comments, which that's all right. I don't care. This is my Laura Geller Fortifying Lashes Eyelash Primer. And I know for a fact that I've had this for about three years. And it's still going. I have it on today. I have both of these on today. 
I love this. She discontinued it. I don't know why she would do such a thing because it is phenomenal. It's hard to find. I haven't looked in a little while. But I'm using it until I can't get anything else out of it. And I know that they say that, you know, your mascaras and stuff get funky and you can give yourself eye infection. I have never, never had a problem. So I guess my eyes are just tough. They, they can handle some stuff. <laughs> they have seen some stuff in this lifetime and they are not afraid of a mascara. They can handle it. So yeah, yeah, way past its prime. But I mean, she's still going strong, not, I mean, it is perfection, even at three years old. Question number six is, have you ever frankened a product repressing or mixing together multiple products in one? So if you don't know anything about panning, you can take products, like say you have a couple of eyeshadows and you don't like the shade, but you mix them together and franken your own eyeshadow shade. Or sometimes people like this, for example, you know, when I keep using it, the circle gets bigger and you're not getting as much product on your brush. So they will take that out, crush it up, and put it back in there so it's easier to use. You get more on your brush. So the answer to that question is yes. I have this ColourPop. I don't remember what this was. Let's see if it's on the bottom. Desert Days Jelly Much Eyeshadow, and it was all dried up. So I took it out, and I took several. I keep eyeshadows that are, like, really, really close to my skin tone. And they're hard to use in those little pans. So I put them in a bowl and mix them, crush them all up, and then I put them in this ColourPop, and that's what I use to set my eye primer. So yes, I have done it, and I shall do it again. Number seven is, have you ever finished a whole eyeshadow? And I have finished a couple, not a lot, because I have thousands of eyeshadows. I mean, if you look at all of the palettes I have and single, I have over 400 single eyeshadows. So, yeah, it's going to take me a long time to get there. But I have, I have completely panned several, maybe like four or five. So in this palette, you can see that this shade right here, which was waxing, is gone. This is my fun size pan that palette. And this shade right here, which is Juno, is almost gone. I am almost there. The rest of these will not get panned because the formula of the rest of the shadows in this little palette suck. But those are some. And then, like, see that cool tone brown right there? That is a Makeup Geek shadow that I have hit pan on and I will eventually finish that one too because it's one of my all-time favorite shades. Number eight is have you ever reviewed a product on a website such as Sephora, Ulta, or a specific brand's website? And yes I have. I have done several reviews on Amazon um, sometimes they're good. Every once in a while I will do, um, a good review if, if the product is really, really good. But normally I will go do a review if the product is not so great because I want to help people make informed decisions and not waste their money. Number nine is continue to use a product that you had a reaction to or that you hated. Absolutely not. Life is too short 
to use makeup that you do not like and why would you continue to use a product that you're having a reaction to? There have been some products that I have used that I maybe didn't really care for. I didn't hate them, but for example, I have I have this Ren Clean Skin Care Global Protection Day Cream and it is for your face and it's, it's a nice product as you can see that's how much of it I have used I used probably up to about right there so maybe not quite half but almost half of it on my face works very well I do not like the smell of it but the smell does kind of dissipate it takes it takes a minute but rather than throw this away I have been using it on my arms because I can't smell it <laughs> on my arms so if it's just something like that where I don't necessarily like the scent but I can use it somewhere else on my body where I can still reap the benefits because you know this does not know whether it's on your face or on your arm so it's going to do a good job no matter where you put it and if you hate a product don't force yourself to use it use products that you love you deserve to use the products that you love take that product if you don't want to throw it away take that product and gift it to somebody else some of your friends and family may actually love it. Number 10 is bought a product specifically for the packaging and then only keep it for said packaging. Now, I have bought a product specifically for the packaging, but I didn't keep it just for the packaging. I mean, I have several products that I bought for the packaging, but I'm using them. So, but for example, I bought this for the packaging, for the product as well, because I think it was on sale, but I loved that packaging. And this is a very nice compact. When this product is gone, I will keep this compact and use it for other things because I can use it for a cream bronzer or a cream blush that is in packaging that is too small. I can rehome it into this very nice compact. The same with this Charlotte Tilbury. This is very nice and I mean it's going to take me forever to use that <laughs> highlighter. However, I do have some cream bronzers that I intend to put over on this side so that I can keep using this. Number 11 is, have you ever done someone's makeup just for fun? And yes, I have. When I was a teenager, we used to do each other's makeup for fun all the time. And what a hot mess it turned out being. And also for fun, sometimes at work, the activities department will ask me to do the Halloween makeup because we have a haunted hayride and a little haunted things that happen and so the sc staff need to look scary so I get to do that which is a lot of fun and I will put a picture here from last Halloween where I did my granddaughter's makeup. Number 12, have you ever done somebody's makeup for a special event like a wedding or a prom or anything like that and I have. I have been asked a couple of times to do uh, it's been a while since I've done wedding makeup and hair, but I have done that. And within the last couple of years, I did a lady's makeup for her son's high school graduation. Number 13, have you ever bought any secondhand makeup from sites like Macari or Poshmark or from a friend? And the answer to that would be no. I've never bought secondhand makeup. I have been given makeup from friends, but I have never paid for it. 
Number 14, have you ever sold secondhand makeup on a website such as Poshmark, Macari, or to a friend? And the answer to that question would be yes. I have a Macari store. When I do declutters here on my channel, I put a lot of those products in my Macari store, selfless plug, and they are always handled very well and sanitized for resale. Most of them are very gently used. If I pass makeup along to friends and family, I normally just give that to them. And number 15, the last question is, have you ever donated makeup to a nonprofit organization or to people for people in need? And the answer to that is yes. There is a business, a local business here that takes uh, items to be donated. They do up these little bags and give them to um, not just women, but to men as well. You can donate things for men, but they give them little little bags like like self-esteem bags. You know, if they are having a hard time finding a job because they just need a little bit of help in the personal hygiene area, you know, they need a little bit of moisturizer or some deodorant or maybe some mascara, just a little something to pick them up and make them feel better about themselves, you know, if they're looking for a job or if they are homeless. And I love, love, love doing that. I, I like to donate quite frequently to those types of organizations. I hope that you will consider donating to those types of organizations as well. There are lots of companies that do those types of things and you can even go on Amazon and find different homeless shelter type places that have a wish list on Amazon and you can actually purchase things from off their wish list and am you pay for it and Amazon sends it directly to them. Thanks again, Andy, for asking me to do this makeup tag collab with you. Andy and I have not done a collab in a hot minute. We are getting back on that bandwagon because we have a lot of fun doing those together. And thank you to Erica and Kay for originally doing this tag. Watching y'all's videos was a lot of fun as well. As I said before, all of those channels will be linked down in the description below so that you can go check them out. And if you like collab style videos, I will put a playlist of mine and Andy's collab videos right here for you to go watch next. Okay, I'll see y'all in the next one. Love you, bye.